So you finally finished making a cutting board you're really proud of and it's time for that glorious part of putting some finish on it. But you want to put a finish on it that's gonna look good, um, be food safe, obviously, if you plan on actually using it or hope your client or whoever you're gifting it to is gonna use it. And you want it to keep looking good as long as possible. Um, I know a lot of people that provide board butter or oil with boards that they sell or gift just so you can reapply it so you keep it looking good. But if you're actually using it and washing it, um, you know, they tend to fade. So I've got a variety of finishes here. We're gonna talk about them and we're gonna talk about the cost, uh, application and durability, pros and cons of each one. First of all, I wanna talk about just general food safe finishes and what you're gonna put on a cutting board are going to be soaking or penetrating finishes that actually go into the wood and that's where they live is inside the wood, not so much on the surface. Finish that lives on the surface is called a film finish and General Finish's Salad Bowl Finish, I really like this. It brings out luster in wood, it's very nice, and it's food safe when cured. However, this is a film finish, so you need to be, because it is a polyurethane base, so whenever you put this on a cutting board, as people start chopping on it, there's a good chance that they're gonna release particulates that's gonna end up in food, so you generally wanna stay away from this if you're trying to be as conservative as possible with food safety. Stay away from any kind of food finishes, so we're gonna set this aside and talk just about the finishes that more penetrate into the wood. Now, when we're talking about finishes that are safe for food, it's easy to get messed up on terminology a little bit because we have food safe and food grade, and the FDA actually doesn't approve any finish. I did a whole video talking about what it is that makes a finish food safe. And two words that get mixed up sometimes is food safe and food grade. Normally when we're talking about food safe, we're talking about a finish that, or a substance that is approved for indirect or direct food contact, which means food can come into contact with it and then be removed. That's direct food contact. Indirect food contact would be like the label on a package that food has where there's a chance it might come into contact, but not really. When we're talking about a cutting board, obviously that is direct food contact. Food grade is a substance that's actually deemed safe to go into the body. So some of these finishes actually are food grade product. Like you could just drink it. I don't think you'd want to necessarily, but technically you could, it's totally harmless. That's different from a finish that's food safe, whereas you don't wanna be ingesting it, but once it's cured, if your food touches it, you're fine. And so when I say food safe versus food grade, just be clear on that and all of these are food safe so if i specify food grade that's an ingredient that you can ingest and obviously if you can ingest it it's fine if your food comes into contact with it now probably one of the most common cutting board finishes we're familiar with is mineral oil mylans which is a finish company I, I, that makes really really high quality finishes they have a food safe oil which is what they call their white oil and it is a premium oil but it's essentially a mineral oil the downside of using mineral oil, which is what this board is finished with, is that it never actually cures. It soaks into the wood well, but it never actually cures. So you have to like really buff it off well. And when it gets warm, it can actually seep out. And that's why, you know, a lot of times after you handle a board that's been finished with mineral oil until it's been washed a few times and the oil removed, every time you touch it, you'll come away a little oily because it just kind of weeps out. And then it needs constant reapplication because since it is still liquid and never really cured, whenever you wash it, you're washing away the oil, you're washing away the protection but it's uh, one of the least expensive finishes um, this can is actually about $32 because it is myelin so it's a little pricier but you can get gallon jugs of just mineral oil for as low as like $20 however what's one of the things that's nice about it is if you're doing a bunch of cutting boards it is one of the easiest finishes to apply because you can literally get a tub fill it up with it because it's pretty inexpensive just dump dunk your boards let them soak and wipe it off so we're gonna flood the surface for all of our examples here. I have an acacia busher block, and we also have some walnut cuttings. So we'll do both of these. The acacia has some nice um, color variety, and then of course walnut, another common material that tends to do really well with good finishes. So it's a good contrast. So let's uh, get this open and show you what the mineral oil looks like. So you can see how it does really bring out the color and luster. One of the downsides of mineral oil is wood tends to really drink it because it does stay liquid. So what you just want to do is kind of flood it. We'll let this sit there for a while and then, you know, wipe off the excess later. 
And for folks that are a little bit of a prima donna about finish, one of the things you'll notice about a mineral oil though, or a white oil, is it doesn't really add any warmth or really bring much out of it because it's just clear. So you, you do get a very natural raw feel for what the wood is, but it's not really adding anything to it. So obviously the downside with your mineral oil, white oils is that it never actually cures. So it washes off really easy. And if you want your boards looking the best, it needs to be reapplied often. One of the ways we can get around that is by adding some wax to it so we do have something that sits on the surface. Since it's on the surface though, it's kind of like a film uh, that needs to be something that's food grade. So we start adding, what we can do is add wax to mineral oil. Howard's is a really common product that you can normally get in most big box stores around you. So it's easy to find, it's very inexpensive. These are normally around $12 a, a bottle or so. And it's a mineral oil and wax blend. Um, normally it's like beeswax, caranuba wax, Oh yeah, right here, food grade mineral oil, stabilized with vitamin E, beeswax, and caranuba. Um, another thing that some people make that would be very similar to this is to melt beeswax in mineral oil in your house. And the nice thing about that is you actually get more of a butter that's easier to apply and doesn't you know, kind of go everywhere. The downside about using this is if you really wanna apply it properly, what you need to do is warm it up and that helps it soak into the wood better. And this needs to sit for about 20 minutes before you buff it off, but you just kind of saturate it, rub it around, let it sit for 20 minutes, buff it off. But you have to need to apply it the first time a good three or four times. So it's, you know, got to apply it quite a few times before you get a good set to kind of season your boards. So you're looking at more time, but it is very inexpensive and gets around some of the issues with mineral oil. So let's rub this in and see what it looks like. Jumping away from mineral oil, a uh, common alternative is walnut oil. Mahoney's walnut oil is a very high quality, very common walnut oil is easy to get. I'm gonna have Amazon links to most of this stuff, but you can normally get this at any woodwork supply stuff or supply shop. And what makes this different is this has been heat treated so it polymerizes, which means it turns into a polymer, basically a plastic. So it actually cures. It doesn't just sit on inside the wood like the mineral oil because it actually cures. It has a lot more durability, so far fewer frequent reapplications. But it is quite a bit more expensive. These tiny bottles, this is a four ounce bottle, I wanna say is normally like $10, $12, whereas you can get that bigger Howard's bottle for the same price. And you can get a 16 ounce bottle for about 30 bucks. Um, one of the things I'm not doing in this video though is breaking out you know, say prorating the prices to figure out how much each a single board of a set size would take and doing price comparisons that way. Um, but yeah, let's see how this stuff looks. Uh, one of the things I do like about walnut oil is it actually does have some good tone so it will warm up the wood and add some contrast and just you know, it warms it up which i really like doing the wood there it is probably going to come up a question though well, what about people with nut allergies and walnut oil is that okay um, because it's been heat treated and refined all the proteins that someone would have a cause an allergic reaction someone has been removed so even for a lot of people with allergies this should be safe however that process is like 99 percent not a hundred percent. So if you do know people have nut allergies, probably best to just stay away from this. Or if you're again, trying to be as conservative as possible and you're selling a lot of boards to a lot of people and you just don't want there to be any question, maybe stay away from the walnut oil, but technically it should be no problem. And I do know people who have nut allergies and that use this and you know, have no problem because besides being heat treated and refined, it also polymerizes. So it's essentially a plastic in the wood. So the proteins can't be extracted from that plastic just because you, you know, set a vegetable on top of it. It's not gonna move. But anyway, let's see what it looks like. Of course, right away, you can just kind of see the difference in the color, the tone that it has. It actually adds some tone to the wood compared to the other finishes so far. And this is also just a, uh, apply liberally, give it a chance to soak in some and wipe off the excess kind of finish. And as you just watch, you can even see it just soak into the wood there. 
Now with the walnut oil, a little bit goes a long way. Another way to stretch it though, and if you like the feel of wax, another nice advantage of wax is it tends to fill the grains in the wood. So like in walnut, which is an open grain wood, very small though, is that you get a, a nice sheen that comes with having those grains filled. Mahoney's also makes an oil wax finish, which is their walnut oil with some waxes added. So again, same kind of thing is gonna polymerize. So you're gonna have a, a solid finish, but you get the softness of the wax, so a nice dull finish, but it also fills the wood grains and you just buff it in. And what you can do, and what they actually recommend is use a utility finish first, just the oil. And then once that's soaked and done its thing, then you can come back over with this, or you can use it on its own, which I often use it on its own on cutting boards. And for this, you just buff it in, give it an hour to dry, and then buff it off. And this is about $28 per tub, I wanna think, but I feel like this stretches a lot farther than the oil does. Um, but I also I don't think it gives quite as dark a finish. Just the plain oil will add a lot more warmth than this will on its own, but uh, it's, a, it's an easier, faster finish to apply, I feel like. And the last one we're gonna talk about is Odie's oil. This one's fairly pricey. It's almost $40 for one of these little tubs, but they go a really, really, really long way. And it's only a single application it is all you need. Another thing I like is this stuff smells really good. Uh, I can't tell you much about it because it is a proprietary blend of oils and waxes. I don't think anyone except for the people who make it really know everything that's in it. it smells amazing though. And it is food safe and solvent free. So they don't say if it's food grade or not. And just like the others, it's a buff in, let it dry, then buff it off. Yeah, buff in, buff off. And the directions are stir well, use sparingly. Let me get a stick, mix this up, and then we'll add it to. And again, the biggest difference with, or <laughs> one big difference between Odie's oil and the others is whereas the others, you tend to really want to uh, cake it on and let it soak in and saturate. This is a really a sparing, kind of oil. You want to try to stretch it. So this has some time to dry, got them all buffed off, peeled the tape away so you can see better and I'll admit with you, like it's gonna be hard to tell on camera. I can, it's easier to see in person, but there really isn't a big difference between how these look. What it's really gonna come down to is durability and um, ease of application. Now, when I first started, I did mineral oil, then I started doing Howard's, basically the way I talked about it. Then I went to the Mahoney's, and now my go-to is the Odie's oil, just because I really like that it's food safe and it's one of the fastest to apply. I really like the finish and how sparing it is. Almost all these are oil products though, and even though most of them are mineral oil, make sure you follow all the precautions you would with oil saturated rags, which is let them dry out completely. Don't bundle them up, have a metal, metal container to put them in, because oil soaked rags can spontaneously combust. But anyway, we'll get some close up shots, and then what we're gonna do next is I'm gonna wash these and several times uh, do probably three, four, five wash and dry cycles and see how these finishes wear after being washed several times. There you go, as you can see, after a couple washings, we're already starting to see some effects and pretty much the finishes that have the wax added are holding a lot better. Whereas the mineral oil, which if you've done mineral oil as on a board before, as you can see, is already really starting to dull and not show very much. So here's a few options. I hope this was helpful for you. I hope you're inspired, learned something, or at least entertained. And until next time, make time to make something.